With us now, astrophysicist Neil deGrasse Tyson, director of the Hayden Planetarium here in New York. Welcome. Thanks. Thanks for having me back. Sounds a bit like science fiction, doesn't it? Yeah, I think all, all great ideas have a flavor of science fiction. Otherwise, it's an ordinary idea. Mm -hmm. And so it has just the right amount of crazy and just the right amount of, hey, that's, you know, there are resources out there. Yes. Think, think what we're doing here on Earth. We're, we're waging war and fighting each other to pull precious metals and other resources deemed rare out of the ground. And, and this is our life down here on this speck that we call Earth. And there's this abundance of materials in the universe. Is there enough, though, in this idea, there's that little bit of crazy to get you going, is there enough potential reality, though, that you see this as something that could actually work? Because harnessing that asteroid doesn't exactly sound easy. Yeah, so it's more than just harnessing the asteroid. It's creating an entire business model that get, gets you access to asteroids in the first place. So initially, and I chatted with them at a recent conference and the, the founders of the mm -hmm. company, and uh, initially, you can park telescopes out there. Once you, have, once you know how to access tele, uh, asteroids whose orbits come near Earth, then you can turn it into an entire asteroid monitoring mission, first of all. All. Second, what's valuable in space is not the same thing that's valuable down here. For example, you can ask, what is the value of a gallon of water already in space? That's different from a gallon of water here on Earth. When NASA needs water, it's got to haul water up its space with it. And that last prices, that was at least $10,000 a pound just for water. So for example, if you can extract water from one of the asteroids, then you have water in space. What's that worth to NASA? All right. Mm -hmm. if, they, if they can provide that to NASA for less than what it takes NASA to get these resources into space to do whatever it needs to do in space, then that's a business model right there. Somebody's got to take these first steps. I'm glad they're doing it. Mm -hmm. I mean, what do you say to those who say the next frontier is the bottom of the ocean, not outer space? Yeah, I, I, I love the bottom. Who doesn't love the bottom of the ocean? <laughs> it's lovely this time of year. It's yeah. lovely this time. You must go. <laughs> uh, so so here, here's the thing. You know, if you stand in front of a class and say, you know, who wants to go in a submersible to the deepest part of the ocean and see what life it's is chilly. <laughs> see what life is there? That's kind of cool. Uh, that's the oceanographer. Then I go in and say, who wants to uh, uh, command a ship to Mars and look for life in the soils of Mars? I win. I, I win that exchange every time Hands because down. because space just works. So what's the most exciting thing that we can do, whether it's 10 years or 20 years or 50 years? You have to realize that modest size asteroids, so you know what asteroids are? They're like the fragments of planets that never formed fully. But many of them, all the materials have already been segregated for us. Segregate a good term in this context. And so you get the heavy metals in the center and the lighter materials in the top, you fragment this body, and now you have chunks of asteroids that are pure heavy metals, platinum, iridium, osmium, gold. Which sounds like it could be great. So if you can get it, it's easy. It's kind of laid out for you. It, it brings up, though, one of the last times you were here, you talked about this asteroid that could be heading for us in, say, 2029, I That'd think be the bad, the bad kind of asteroid. That's the bad yeah. kind of asteroid. But if we can figure out how to get a hold of the good kind of asteroid, could we also use that knowledge to get a hold of the bad asteroid and keep it from visiting? By all means. One great vision of science fiction writers and science fact imaginers is that the, the mining companies that are working on these asteroids say, hey, one of those got Earth's name on it. It's headed our way. Why don't you deflect it over a few inches right now so that it b misses Earth entirely on its whatever would be its fateful voyage towards us? Oh, yeah, and you don't even need Bruce Willis for that. A, <laughs> once, once you know how to manipulate and use and operate on asteroids, you, you're good. You're good to go. And there are tens of thousands of these things. When you come back here, I want you to dial it up. I want you to be more passionate about your subject. <laughs> <laughs> space is calling me. We want to make sure you still win with that Mars over the, over the submersible yeah. every time. <laughs> still go to the ocean, but space is, is a, beckons us all. Neil, always great to have you here. Right, thank, thank you. you.